Let's go to another genius, uh, Newsom. Uh, here's an article from The Blaze a month ago. Leftist anarchist experiences You're California. You're trying to get me in trouble. You're trying California. to get me in trouble, Pat. California is a <laughs> shit show under Newsom. Yes. Leftist commentator anarchist sparing the Young Turks describes California as a shit show. The leadership of Golden State Calif- uh, Governor G- Governor Newsom, a Democrat, California is without a question a shit show under Newsom. But I guess propping up proven failures is what the Democratic Party excels. True. At these days, Kasparian uh, uh, opined. In a post on X, failure is what Democratic Party excels at. Uh, I'm sorry, no, Newsom, who served as governor since 2019, won re-election last year after surviving a governor. Da, 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 da. Okay, so California. You're still living in California, right? I lived there for 24 years minus three years in the Army. You lived in California. You lived years. in California. I was born there. And he's dated a lot of Californians, but he's never <laughs> lived in California. Yeah. So how is California like today? How is your governor doing today? And why are you still in California? I'm still in California. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. I'm not going to leave and just allow the most extreme elements of the left destroy the state. Okay? So I'm going to stay and I'm going to fight and I'm going to make it better. I think L.A. and California in general still has a lot of potential. But there have been some policies implemented that have been disastrous. So Gavin Newsom and the current uh, Democratic legislature in the state of California have engaged in this trend of decriminalizing everything and refusing to regulate things. So I'll give you some examples. One of the things that they decriminalize but refuse to regulate is prostitution. Okay, I think that sex work should be legalized and regulated. Okay, what I mean by that is I don't want to see prostitutes walking around in thongs on the streets as kids are walking to school. But what the Democrats in California have done is we're not, we don't have the balls to actually legalize and regulate it. And we're lazy as hell. So we're just going to do the super lazy thing of decriminalizing, which means we're going to disempower our legal system, disempower law enforcement and just allow sex workers to do what they're currently doing right now, which is they have no protection, they're not paying taxes, they're being controlled and and sex trafficked by Johns, okay? It is the worst possible solution to the issue, okay? No one is safe, everyone's angry, and you see all sorts of terrible stuff happening right there in broad daylight in the middle of the street. Okay, they did the same thing with drugs, okay? We're gonna decriminalize. So what do you see in California? Bunch of people shooting up, okay, and smoking crack all over the place. I'm sorry, I'm not interested in seeing that. I don't think that we should be, you know, dealing with that on the metro system. Mm. Why do taxpayers have to deal with that? So they don't want to. They don't want to do anything to regulate. Again, I am fine with legalizing these things as long as we regulate it. As long as we find the right balance to keep everyone safe, keep everyone as happy as they can be, so we can see these cities thrive. But these cities are not thriving, okay? San Francisco is terrifying. And i it's hilarious to me because the business community there wants to put lipstick on a pig. They want to put out this $4 million ad campaign pretending as though everything in San Francisco is all hunky-dory. It's not hunky-dory. San Francisco is a nightmare. Yes, violent crime went down a little bit, but <laughs> your car's going to get broken into. Okay, you're going to get robbed. Th- those are up, by the way. Both yeah, of those, those two are categories are and up. The, and the smash and grabs, and you love the yeah. smash and grabs in LA because they decriminalized yep. under thousand so. dollars. Keep going. I mean, it's just not. It's not right. There are certain issues that we've had for a long time. The drug war was a failure. And so going back to the drug war, I don't think is going to be effective. But you know what else isn't effective? Mm. Using taxpayer money, funneling it to nonprofits so they can literally buy crack pipes and hand them out at Skid Row. And there, bleach There pits. is video evidence of that. How does that make So anyone sense? on the left yeah. who wants to come at me and pretend like this is just a right wing scaremongering talking point, you're full of crap and you should go online and you should watch the videos of literal. We spent 13 billion dollars in Los Angeles alone last year to combat homelessness. You want to know where that money went? That money went to these trash nonprofits who have a bunch of executives making half a million dollars a year. You're working for a nonprofit dealing with homelessness. That's my money. That's my parents' money. Okay? That is the hardworking people of California paying incredibly high taxes that go to what? 
So yeah, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. And honestly, just experiencing what I've seen on the ground in California has made me question a lot about left-wing ideology. Now, what do you think about your governor going and spending time with G this last week? I'll read the story to you. Uh, I think even even just happened maybe yesterday. Yesterday, he was there yesterday. Was. Yeah, so here you go. California Governor Newsom has surprising meeting with uh, China's leader Xi amid warm welcome in Beijing. California Governor uh, Newsom meet Xi during a, his visit to Beijing uh, underscores a shift in U.S.-China relations. Newsom's focus on climate cooperation comes in height, heightened tensions between the two nations, with Xi expressing hope that the visit would enhance cooperation between China and California. Xi stated, I hope your visit will enhance mutual understanding between the two sides and play a positive role in expanding cooperation between China and California and promoting the healthy and stable development of uh, Sino-U.S. Uh, relations. During these discussions, Newsom and Xi addressed the acceleration of climate progress and combating the transnational shipping of precursor, precursor chemicals for syn synthetic drugs such as fentanyl. Xi hinted at the possibility of attending the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in San Francisco and meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden. Why, why do you think he's in China? He's in China because he already thinks of himself as the president, okay? He... I have no doubt that eventually it'll come to a point where the Democratic Party has decided, no, 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 this is the person you need to vote for. Anyone who speaks out against him uh, is the enemy. I would just say that his leadership in California is good reason to brush him off for the loser that he really is. OK, you're over there in China talking about fentanyl, right? How about you clean up your own house? How about you take a look at what's happening with the prosecutions or lack of prosecutions of the drug traffickers in your state? He can't be bothered to deal with that, right? He can't be bothered to deal with the absolute degenerate garbage that comes out of his administration. Instead, he's going to China pretending as if everything he's been doing in California is great. And he's a great leader who you know, has that road paved for him to be president. I can't stand Newsom, okay? We're talking about a guy who has implemented policies that has increased crime in his state, and then he turns around and says, no, no, I'm going to sign off on this uh, legislation that bans bulletproof vests in California. What? You're going to ban bulletproof vests without addressing the, like, obvious violent crime that's happening in your state that's on tape that's all over the media. He just wants to pretend like what he has done to the state hasn't actually happened, but it's happened and people are angry. They're furious about it. The thing that frustrates me is that a lot of people vote based on vibes, right? So they look at him and they mm -hmm. see a, a relatively young guy with good hair and he carries himself well and they think that that's a leader. But look at his leadership in the state, and then please come talk to me about how successful he's been. And he's trying to put the fake on that right now. He's trying to put the head fake. Uh, he vetoed the bill about uh, parents and trans. You saw that? I did see ago. that, yeah. Then he vetoed a bill that was being pushed by the unions to enforce fully automated trucks that would go up and down I-5. Um, I that if they were a fully autonomous truck, they still had to have a human sort of driving the truck insane and it insane. was a, it was a jobs bill basically and he went against that he vetoed, so yep. he picked a few things out to really kind of get this vibe moving toward the middle and they chose to promote those things i think the whole thing is a stage show and i think the fix is in and i, 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 agree I, I was just going to say this i agree i agree with you 100% he's one of the you know reasons that we left i know he was he had trying to get a recall with uh larry elder it didn't work out but what I, I, I can't wrap my head around why people keep voting for it's not like it's just him. It's just it's not changing. Huh? And you said you would you're not leaving because you want to make a change. What the hell can the people that are there mm. do if they keep voting for the same exact people? Same as Chicago, same as Baltimore, same as all those horribly ran states. Why do they keep voting for these people? I just don't I don't get it. Look, I, I can't speak for other parts of the country, but I think California is notorious for voters who aren't really politically active, politically aware, and that has created a vacuum. <laughs> for, or informed. Poor, uh, yeah. uh, well, when it comes to politics, I would say, right? Yeah. And so that's created an opportunity for some of the more far-left activist fringe of mm -hmm. the party mm -hmm. to basically take control of things. 
Uh, and I'm talking about like the individuals who think that it makes sense to literally abolish prisons and police, which yeah, unbelievable. And, and then they turn around, by the way, when I cr critique it or criticize it, it's like, no, no, but we don't actually mean abolish. No, no, you mean abolish. Newsom has closed two state prisons during COVID. He released Everybody. <laughs> tens of thousands of people from these prisons. OK, now he lied and told everyone that the people he released were all nonviolent offenders, yeah. all nonviolent offenders. They're not all nonviolent offenders. Some are rapists. I'll give you some. I'll give you an example. I did deep research into this. I remember reading the story of one of the people who got uh, let out during COVID, a woman who literally murdered her boyfriend and then drove hundreds of miles north to dump his body. She got released. Jeez. So how are you going to come to me and tell me? No, no, no. The only people who got released are nonviolent offenders. And by the way, let's say we give him that argument, right? We believe him. They were all nonviolent. Okay, what did you do after that? So you released tens of thousands of people in one of the most expensive states in the country during the coronavirus pandemic where a bunch of, where every business is shut down. There's no work. Yeah. What, what, what happened to them? Where'd they go? Where did they go? They ended up on the streets, probably super desperate. You're on, you're on the streets. You're super desperate. What, what are you going to do? Recent graduate of Crime College. Yeah, and you nailed this. And there was one. The there, was, there was one guy that got arrested. He was in jail for attempted murder. They released him. It was a story in Cali before I moved here, and he committed murder. And he killed somebody once they released him because they were like, "We don't want you to get COVID in jail." Are you Are you kidding me? To hell with them. They already they sealed their freaking their fate. And, and, and just really fast before you ask, and so if we you had to, to get, oh, if you had to get, no, it's all good. If you had to guess right now. Who's going to run? Let's say Biden's not. It doesn't look like there's no way this guy's going to run. If you had to pick two from the Democratic Party, I'm, I'm assuming uh, Newsom, who would be number two? If you had to guess and we had to bet money, who would you bet? Who would run? Who would who would go? Who would be the, the, the Democrats? Number one, you'd say Gavin Newsom. It's going to be Newsom. A hundred percent. I Either. I think Newsom is. First in line, yeah. I think they're also considering people like uh, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan. Oh, God help us. Look, I would take her over. I, That's I just, horrible that we have not, to do that. I, not I, Kamala. I could never vote for Newsom. No, I just not can't. Not Kamala. Not Kamala. Um, useless. Well, here's my question. Yeah. Well, if, if, it's, if it's a true open primary, Booker and Klobuchar are coming. If it's a true open primary. But I don't think it's going to be open primary. That's why I say the fix is in. Yeah, when he's going to China. Like, what, has a governor ever gone, Pat, to go meet with a a world leader like that and talk about climate. By the way, China has one of the worst carbon footprints in the world, and they're over there talking about climate. Are you freaking well, kidding me? Just dude? to be clear on Newsom, best of luck out there in California. You know, uh, you. good luck trying to convince uh, Californians to uh, displace their political ideology and vote independent. I think two thirds of, a, I think of Californians vote Democrat. That's not changing anytime soon. President Newsom, yeah. there he is. He's the man. You know, they say the old adage, like it, when you're when you're running in primaries run to the left or run to the right, depending on what side of the aisle you're on, and then pivot to the middle. So in California, he's just running in a, in a, in a primary. He, he's pandering to the leftists and the woke mob in California, and that's easy because you're not going to unseat that guy running to the right. We saw what happened with Larry Elder. Five million votes still didn't even come close. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Um, but talk about President Newsom as a general election candidate. He can't go far woke left. That's not going to win in America. So in my opinion, you know, I don't think he's that far left. I think he's pandering. Mm -hmm. He's a skilled politician. He's a force to be reckoned with. Anytime well, that you're doing what you're doing over there, showing up on Fox, dominating Hannity, doing his thing, he's meeting with Xi, now he's debating DeSantis. Whether you like him or not, he's a force to be reckoned with. It gen like you, you know DeSantis, I'm sorry, um, Newsom very well. What would a President Newsom candidacy look like in a general yeah. election, not just pandering to the left? Yeah, good question. Um, he would sell out the American people to corporate interests, just like he did with PG&E, starting fires and destroying countless Californians' lives as a result of that. He bailed them out. He totally bailed them out. He has provided protection for them, even though they refused absolutely refused to update their century year old equipment, which everyone knew was going to lead to devastating wildfires. That's exactly what happened. The, the fire that happened in uh, Hawaii, same thing there in Maui. 
Yes, but look, what happened in Hawaii is very similar. Um, but one of the worst fires in uh, California history happened in 2018. It was the Camp Fire. Mm -hmm. And that Camp Fire happened because a PG&E hook that was uh, holding up the power lines mm -hmm. broke. What's PG&E for all of us? Oh, uh, it's Pacific uh, Gas and Electric. Yeah, okay. Pacific Gas and Electric. Is this electric? the famous Trump uh, uh, Newsom meetup where they're raking leaves and doing yes. all that stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that yes. worked out well. So Which, funny. by the way, like that's the other thing about that moment with Trump. So yeah. he's not the most eloquent individual. Let's just put it that way. So when he talks about raking leaves, it's like, what is he talking about here? <laughs> But if <laughs> he's volunteering for park range, I love what him. He's doing. He likes I rake, alone can the fix it. Rake. All the leaves. I love But rakes. he did have Squirrels a will be happy. Point. They live yeah. right He here. did have a point. What I mean by that is you're supposed to do like the Native Americans, they would do controlled burns, mm -hmm. right? They would thin out the forest knowing that like wildfire season is coming and it's going to be unmanageable. You have to do controlled burns. The problem is communities don't like the controlled burns because the controlled burns like ruin the air quality temporarily for a couple like a okay. couple weeks yeah but you there's really no other option we're gonna end up having these wildfires and if you don't take care of the vegetation it's gonna make it a million times worse mm -hmm. so we had a point there yeah. and i the media but, but, overwhelmingly like brushed off that legitimate but Anna, point. what's the larger metaphor here because 99 yeah. percent of americans are like yeah i don't give a shit about wildfires but President Newsom, yeah. as a general election candidate, what does that look like beyond what's going on in California? Well, what we were talking about yeah. earlier, right, <clears throat> about the pharmaceutical companies and the lobbyists and how much influence they have over our politicians. Newsom is prime example, is a prime example of someone who would be overwhelmingly influenced by corporate interests. I know it mm -hmm. because that's exactly what happened with PG&E in the state of California. Mm. OK, they fund his campaign heavily. And he looks out for them to the detriment of Californians who literally lost their homes as a result of PG&E's gross incompetence and unwillingness to upgrade their So what's the difference equipment? between him and any corporate politician that just gets bought and sold by the lobbyists? No, the, there's the not. But let's stay on this what's point real difference? quick. Let's stay on the, there, there's not a difference. Um, you're, you're, where you're going, the, answer, the short answer is there's not a difference. But let's go to the circle so people can see it. Gavin Newsom and the Green been pushing green cars, green energy and electric cars in California, pushing hard, putting uh, percentages out there that are almost can't be met. PG&E has gone to the governor's office and saying, which do you want? A multi-billion dollar rebuild of the trans transport lines that go through the forest, or do you want more kilowatt opportunity out there because you've got to charge these cars. You have a brownout every time you have a hot summer. That's right. What do you think if everybody plugs in 25% EVs? I can't deliver the energy. There's going to be massive brownouts. Do you want me to build more capacity or do you want me to fix all these uh, transport lines? No, you're right. Build the capacity. That's the trade. Newsom made the trade. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.